Hey, thanks for clicking this video. I hope that you learned something from it. Um, I'm the Potter Eden. My name is Emily Edens. And if you're new here, welcome. If you're not new around here, welcome back. So um, today in this video, I'm going to be talking about my kiln. Yes, I wear glasses, but <laughs> look at the reflection. It's horrible. So uh, I'm not wearing them right now. And I'm totally doing this blind. <laughs> Anyways, in today's video, what I'm going to be talking about is my kiln. It is an electric kiln that is controlled by switches. Like, what? Weird. And I bought it from somebody who actually bought it used in the 80s. So, it's a dinosaur. I actually had somebody ask me to post like a picture of the finished product but lucky for y'all I put it in this firing so you will actually see me unload it but that's the only thing you're gonna see me unload because I actually forgot to film myself unloading anything else so all the trays are in their respective homes I'm sorry but anyways um yeah today we're gonna be uh, exploring the world of electric kilns that are run by switches. So I hope you have fun. I hope I'm entertaining enough. And uh, if you feel like it, you should subscribe um, or like and comment or do whatever it is that the other YouTubers say to do because, you know, YouTube and stuff and YouTube algorithm and whatever. <laughs> so without any further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, here's my sweet little baby dinosaur. Everything's working on it. As you can see here, we've got these um, kind of industrial light switches here. And each one of these, there's four of them, each one of them corresponds with two coils that are along the lines on the inside of the kiln. The fire brick is carved out where the two lines of coil run. Now each switch on the outside controls each set of coils and they get hot, heat the kiln, and fire the ceramics. As you can see, here is my cone sitter. You've got these two prongs that come out and these ones sit in two little slits in here and this is what's going to help balance my cone. Here is a cone. I'm going to be doing this firing at cone 05 and that's going to give me the temperature at which it will melt at. Here is an example of melted and unmelted cone. So you can see this has melted at that right angle and that means that this middle pin which holds our lever up once that melts it drops so when I put the cone inside it moves this lever right here and it's going to hold this piece of metal so whenever that cone melts, it's going to drop and let go of it. And this right here pops out. Now this is kind of the go button. So once you have the cone set in here and you've got this pushed up, you push in this button right here and that's going to give you power. Then you can start switching on your switches. So that button stays pushed in. And then once this falls, whenever that cone melts and this falls, this button pops out because it's no longer held in place. Just like this. So this used to be straight and then it dropped just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load my kiln. I'm going to show you how to put this guy in and how everything works together.
So the lid of my kiln is actually kind of falling apart and I put another kiln shelf on top of my top shelf that actually has stuff on it and then I don't put anything on my top shelf. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my cone inside of my cone sitter. Set my cone inside. And then I would go ahead and flip the outside. After about an hour of having that first switch on and nothing else on, I go ahead and put the lid on and you want to make sure that there is no more moisture in the kiln. I usually do that by putting my glasses or a mirror up to my peephole or the hole in the top of the lid. I continue to let that heat up with just the one switch on and the lid on and the peephole closed for about an hour and then I'll go ahead and flip the second switch. I'll wait another hour, flip the third switch, wait another hour, switch the fourth on, and then after about an hour and a half of all the switches being on, that's usually when the fire is complete. You'll know that it's complete for sure whenever that kill switch is down and your power button is no longer pushed in. Then you've got the really hard part of waiting about 16 to 20 hours for the kiln to cool off enough to open it and unload it to see all your gorgeous, gorgeous pottery. This one's one that I didn't show any kind of tutorial on, but I used it in a workshop. Um, this was actually from, all these trays were from me teaching a workshop. And uh, I just used a doily in here and then I inlaid all the color and rubbed the excess off. I kind of left it rough. If I haven't already told you, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Let's get down to brass tacks here. Thank you for watching. Come back and watch other videos. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Um, I think I I think this is the end of the video. So I'm just gonna go now. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.